Well, I thought today we would take a look at the markets, do a market analysis, but also provide a little bit more um, information and thoughts surrounding how you might want to position your overall portfolio, just given what the economic backdrop is. So for that, I brought in a veteran on Bay Street, John Zechner. He is the chair of John J. Zechner & Associates. John, great to be able to be with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, nice to see you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, it, it's an interesting time. We, we've gotten through quite a bit of first quarter earnings, more so in the United States and in Canada. Um, it seems as though the results, at least in the States, are coming in better than feared. We had a U.S. CPI number that came in below expectations. You'd think that would give the Fed a reason to pause. And of course, all of this trickles into Canada, and we'll talk a lot about Canada today as well. Um, but where does that leave you in terms of the macro backdrop? You know what, Catherine, it's it's very confusing, quite honestly. If you had told me at the beginning of last year, 18 months ago, that we were going to go from zero to five percentage points in U.S. short-term interest rates, I would have said the market was going to be down, you know, the market would be down 30% plus and the economy would be in a full-out recession, given how uh, we've been sort of weaned onto these low interest rates for zero interest rates for such a period of time. The resilience of the economy is, is almost shocking to me at this point. And, you know, I, I keep sort of looking back as the, you know, this this ultimate recession is like waiting for Godot, you know, is it going to come? And, I you know, I think a couple of things, obviously, the reopening of the economy and the resurgence of the service economy has kept things going for a while. I think the ultimate impact of higher interest rates, oddly enough, has been more of a positive in the short term, because I think it was high levels of savings coming out of the pandemic. So people are getting more on their savings in the short term, which is helping you know, consumer spending a little bit. Employment levels have held up for now. And it's also somewhat surprising. It's it's hard to it's somewhat hard to get really bullish because we, you know, the Fed will keep rates tight until you get this slowdown, until you get inflation under control. You mentioned the inflation numbers have gotten a little bit better, but you know, surface inflation is so high, the core inflation is, is not really breaking down from this five, you know, five and a half percent range. And and you know, that's a long, long way from their 2% predicted target. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting though, because I, I would agree, the economy at least seems resilient. I keep waiting, to your point about waiting for Godot, um, to see what the bank fail, uh, fallout might be uh, you know, from SVB and really how tight the lending standards are, because that's I, I'm really looking at that to try to figure out how that might impact growth to, to the negative side and really push us into a recession. I don't know if that's a key area of focus for you because right now we, we seem to just be in a neutral ground with respect to the economy, which maybe it's not a bad thing, but we will always want to be thinking about what comes next. Yeah, it's, um, I, I agree. I mean, that bank lending, when I, I've looked at some charts on it lately, and when you've seen this kind of tightness in bank lending, you have always seen a recession or a banking crisis or something follow up, you know, afterwards. So it, it's hard to imagine this is not going to, you know, you're, you're tightening up the standards dramatically. A lot of these front end indicators are really starting to turn down quickly and that banking indicator is, is certainly one. So, you know, I, I still fully believe we will head into a recession or something very close to it. And from that point of view, it's obviously going to be a little tougher for the, the stock market because earnings get impacted. But I tell you, the market is resilient to the downside. I mean, I keep thinking these October lows will hold. You know, for one, I mean, the positioning of so many investors is so bearish. Uh, I, you know, we, we, we've sort of tested this bottom a couple of times. I don't know if we're going to break it. So, you know, we, we sort of stuck with our waiting in stocks. It's, it's, a, it's uncomfortable to stay there, but that's just the reality of it right now. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to ask as well, John, what, what are you actually seeing or, or, you know, what are you observing as it relates to tighter lending uh, requirements? Are you seeing that? I mean, I someone said to me, if you were a lending officer at a bank, would you really be uh, out there lending? You want to keep your job? Well, yeah, no, it, you do. You do need the books in, but you want good loans out there. No, in, in terms of, I guess, when you look at the lending standards and the way they're measured effectively, what you're seeing is, is you know, what the rates are, what the spreads are for the banks and, and sort of what the credit quality is. And, you know, get these all into, you know, the comp composite indicators that the banks put on on a periodic basis, what their capital ratios are. And all of that suggests, you know, tightness in lending right now, which is not surprising given what a sharp move in interest rates and some slowness in the economy that we're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and it's going to be important to see how that really does impact the economy. And again, therefore, how do we want to be positioned?